with my initial steering committee of local residents in Logan Square and Albany Park and Hermosa, we said, you're going to be an organizing alder, right? You are going to go in there and you're going to help build an independent political organization in the 35th Ward to make sure that they always hold you accountable, that you never forget why they elected you. And in many ways, I'm setting up a machine Right? But it's a machine of people who act independently and who are there not because they're getting a job, not because they feel like they want to relate to some powerful don in the city of Chicago. They're there because they believe in the progressive values on which I was elected. And I know that these are the folks that knock doors to get me elected. These are, doors, these are folks that knock doors to get Chewy elected. And if I don't stick to that platform on which I was elected, they have the power to take me out of there. And that's exactly where I want to be at. Because in order for me to stay on the good side, all I have to do is do exactly what I said I was going to do before I got elected to the city council. So how has this worked in practice? How has this really worked? Um, and I guess the best example is one of the first major votes that I had to take when um, our financial genius of a mayor uh, Mr. Rahm Emanuel came and said, I want you to vote on additional borrowing from the big banks. And look, I'm, I'm a progressive. I want to see government funded. I want to make sure that we have funding for vital programs for our community. Um, but in this instance, um, when I asked our chief financial officer how the city planned to pay this money back, because I'm sorry, you don't get a loan from a bank without them asking, how do you plan to pay for this? Um, she told me, I can't discuss that with you. And I said, well, did the banks ask you this question when you were in the chase? Uh, did uh, Bill Daly ask you this question when you were negotiating this deal with him? And she said, yes, they did ask that question. I said, well, what did you say? And she said, I'm not at liberty to give details right now. <laughs> so here is a big bank who has more access to information about how the mayor of the third largest city in the United States has plans about the financial future of the city, and they know more than a member of the city council. And so I was getting a lot of pressure, right? My colleagues in the city council were kind of like, what's this guy's deal? How's he gonna turn out? You know, is he gonna tote the line? Um, so I was getting pressure from, from my new colleagues in the city council to vote a certain way. Uh, I was getting pressure from, from friends who were saying, look, you don't want to go against the mayor on this. You've got to vote for it. But at the end of the day, what made my decision really easy was that I knew that I had a group of people that were organized and that were ready to fight alongside me when I made the right choice. And so I decided to vote no, and I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> the great thing now is that the field is really wide open. And if you can organize a group of 30, 40, 50 of your neighbors who commit to build a vision and then take action around that vision, right, whether it be direct action or electoral action, knocking doors and turning out the vote, you can really take control of your community. And so I have no doubt that in the coming elections, this group can take control of this community and return it back to the working people of the city of Chicago.